It is always refreshing to get letters and emails and questions from young people. We have a 15 year old who wrote in this question. He says, how do we know Jesus existed? I'm 15 years old and I'm somewhat new to Christianity, but there's something that's always been holding me back. I believe in God 100% because I believe the universe has to have a creator and some sort of some sort, but I'm torn between whether he had a son named Jesus. All I ask is you can help me if you can help me and give me evidence to further my faith because I believe the only two possible religions could be Judaism or Christianity. And I'm torn whether Jesus is real. Thank you and God bless. I, I just, I think this question is an awesome question for you to ask. I think it's an important starting point for you. Uh, I want to encourage you. We're gonna put up on the screen for you a link to a video that was produced by a young man uh, when he was just a little bit older than you. And I think you'll enjoy this video because he does address these questions. But I, I wanna just piggyback on some of the things that he's already said in Romans chapter one. You've already made reference to the fact that there is a creator. Romans chapter one talks about the invisible aspects of God becoming made known. And he talks a lot in Romans chapter one about creation. And what we have done, he says in Romans one, is that we have made creation our God rather than God our God. In other words, we worship the tree rather than the one who made the tree. We worship the cow rather than the one who made the cow. We worship the universe rather than the one who created the universe. So you rightly perceive that there is a creator. Uh, there is a God who created the heavens and the earth. We know that from reading the scriptures. We have, we have four gospels. We have uh, 27 letters of the New Testament. We have historical writings of a generation that appeared after the first generation of Christians had died off. We call them the church fathers. We have a four, five, 600 year history after the death of Christ that looks back on the historical aspects of Jesus, the birth of the church, how it grew, what the people believed, etc. Many people died a martyr's death because they believed that Jesus Christ was real. Many historians refer to Jesus Christ. Josephus, a Jewish historian, uh, by no accounts a Christian, uh, talked about Jesus and, and, and made this incredible statement. He said, he said, he spoke of Jesus Christ, a man. And then he, he added this, if it is right to call him a man. And then he speaks of him being crucified under Pontius Pilate. There's enough historical data out there to prove that Jesus existed. The question is whether or not what Jesus claimed to be, whether or not that's true. For example, in John's gospel, uh, written 90 years after uh, Jesus was born, uh, about 60 years after Jesus was crucified, uh, John, the apostle of Christ, the witness to his death and the witness to his resurrection, he writes this. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now we need to understand when John writes about the word, he's talking about a Greek word called logos, which means everything that God was, everything that God is, everything that God ever will be. It's all wrapped up in that word, word, logos. He tells us in the beginning was that word and that word is the one who created all things. He is the creator of the universe whoever this one called the word is, created all things. And then he goes on in verse 14 of John chapter one, and he says, and that word, that is God, that word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. And then he goes through his gospel, he goes through its chapters and he gives us seven stories seven declarations of Christ in which he calls himself the great I am, seven miracles that surrounded those claims of being the great I am, and seven followings or discourses or sermons that came as the result of that. When Jesus referred to himself as I am, 
The Jews picked up stones to throw at him because they said he committed blasphemy. And in their sense of the word, that's exactly what he did. He claimed to be God because a Jew was not allowed to say the word Yahweh or I am. That's what I am is in the Hebrew, Yahweh. They would actually, uh, they would actually mark it in such a way that they could see it, but they could not say it because the word was too sacred, too holy. When Moses appeared before the burning bush and God gave him the command to go to Egypt and, let, and free his people from Pharaoh, uh, Moses said, well, when I go, whom shall I say sent me? And Jesus, the word, the bush, the, 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 the voice of God spoke out, tell them I am has sent you. Yahweh has sent you. God named himself. And that is what Jesus claimed to be seven times in the Gospel of John. He pointed to himself and said, I am that same I am that spoke through the burning bush. That's when they picked up stones to throw at him. Now the question becomes, do we believe that? Does history record that the first four, five, six hundred years of church life, did they believe it? Well, they believed it so much they were willing to be tortured. They were willing to be burned. Some of them had to watch their children draped in animal skins, dipped in blood, and thrown into uh, a den with, with wild lions and wild dogs to be ripped apart. The, the way in which these early Christians could have prevented their children from doing that is to deny or to recant their faith, to say, I don't believe in Christianity anymore. So what would motivate people to be willing to die on crosses, to go to lion's dens, to be martyrs? What would, what would motivate people to allow their children to be butchered that way if this thing that we called Christianity wasn't for real? They witnessed his resurrection. Generations to follow witnessed the power of his resurrection. They saw the spread of the early church. And then after the 27 books of the New Testament were written, probably in the first three or 400 years, then we have these other writings beginning to appear. Writings from what we call the, the apocryphal writings uh, and then the church fathers writings. In other words, two sets of material, new gospels or other gospels, which were kind of like novels of the New Testament. And then the actual leaders of the church, the bishops and the, and the, and the ones who were the teachers of the, of the next three or 400 years of church life, they wrote materials, they wrote teachings and, and uh, theological discourses and spoke of the character and the person of Jesus. Then you have the whole spread of history as we know it today. And you look at the world and the affect of Christ upon this world, the world's largest religion, uh, growing out of a lie? I don't think so. Growing out of a myth? I don't think so. So I wanna encourage you to watch that video. See what people your age or around your age thought when they put this video together to answer the question about whether or not there was such a person as a historical Jesus. And once you come to the conclusion that he was who he said he was, that is truly when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man will see God but by me. Once you receive that information about who he is, then it's up to you at that point to decide whether or not you're gonna give your heart and your life to Christ. I hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.